So hey there, welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. On today's On The Hunt, I'm not looking for old trucks, I'm looking for old places where the Smokey and the Bandit movie was filmed. Daddy, you're about to have your evening ruined for you. All right, so first up on the list is the park where Burt Reynolds and Sally Field pulled off to stretch their legs. And I'm pretty sure I found the spot where he drove off the road, kind of this sloped area. He pulled the Trans Am and then pulled it in somewhere over in here. And an outborn team, shackles on the back. Then they got out and of course, Burt Reynolds got out of the car and he gave a Gave a good long stare to Sally Field's backside. And that would have been kind of somewhere in this spot here. And then after talking a little bit and falling in love, they ended up striding over to what the locals here call the kissing bridge. Bandit steal a lady's heart with only a smile. Now, this obviously isn't the original bridge. The original bridge probably fell down and rotted 20 years ago. And this replacement bridge is looking a little rough as well, but this was actually the spot where they stopped and and uh, Sally Field was asking him. Don't you ever take that hat off for anything? Sure. I took it off for one thing and one thing only. And that would have been somewhere about here, standing over this creek. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely changed. The bridge is a lot bigger than it used to be, but this would have been the, the romantic spot where, where they fell in love. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's go see what else I can find. I know a lot more of the movie was filmed around here. All right, this next stop's pretty cool. So this would have been the spot where they had that roadblock. Sarge, he comes. Yeah, I got eyes. And Bert and Sally would have pulled pulled off way up there. And they said, holy shit, we got a lot of company up there. And so they would have been sitting there and the, the roadblock was here. And as you could see, you could still see the remnants of this ramp. And there was a whole bunch of people sitting up on this uh, this platform up here. That's pretty good, don't you, Sarge? Yes, see about that. Now it looks like a fire came through and burned this building a while back, which, which is unfortunate. This is kind of a... Uh, a landmark for smoking the bandit aficionados like myself. Oh man, there's not much, there's not much going on in there. The whole, the roof fell down and yeah, I'm not sure what this place was before, but this would have been where all those uh, extras were sitting and watching. And then again, the, the roadblock would have been there. So then when Burt Reynolds says, Ready, Roy? I was born ready. And then they went shooting up this way. Now obviously this isn't a road, there's trees right there, but I think what they ended up doing was they came around the building. Yeah, they would have just went shooting around the building like that and then came out on the other side. I wonder if Mrs. Twin Six would let me, uh, would let me purchase this and bring it back to its former glory and <laughs> sell tickets. But yeah, so this would have been where they came shooting out and then took off down the road. And then all of the, the cop cars, they all were confused and were banging into each other. And they ended up trying to, to get turned around to go after Bandit. So yeah, of course, after all the cars started slamming into each other, they ended up flooring it backwards off the hill here and dropped into the creek. <laughs> You okay, Sarge? You okay? You see me moving, don't you? <laughs> ah, good stuff. So yeah, it's a little overgrown, but you can tell this was the spot where that uh, that scene was filmed. Very cool. 
Now that building there is a, is a rock shop. I'm not sure if it's still open, but you can tell, I'll flash back to the movie. You can see that that uh, still got its same shape and color. So they would have been driving along this way when Sally Field was nattering on. Have you ever been in any uh, high school plays and stuff? And you can see those buildings in the back. We got a lot of company up there. All right, so next up, I'm trying to find the spot where they did a little pond hopping. So originally, the road used to come through here and then it would go, it kind of went around the corner and followed the, the creek or the river. Now it's obviously no trespassing private property. I can't go down that way. But the road used to follow the edge of the river and then it would pop out back up there. So that's where we'll head over there. And I think I could find the spot where they actually drove the Trans Am down into the creek. Want to do a little pond hopping truck? Uh, swell. All right, so as far as I can tell, the original road would have followed the creek. And I actually looked at the map. It's not a creek. That's actually the Chattahoochee River. So who knew that the bandit went pond hopping in the Chattahoochee? It gets hotter than a hoochie coochie. I think the road, the original road would have came around and made a bend and then merged back to where the, the new highway is. And so that would have been the, the bend in the road where Bandit did the little burnout, smoked the tires, and then dropped down into the, into the Chattahoochee. <laughs> Now, obviously a lot has changed in 50 years, so I'm not too sure where they, where they went in. And these trees look pretty old, so they were probably already here. Maybe he dropped down there, because it is pretty shallow and flat there. That would have been a good spot to, to kind of burn through without flooding out the engine. But what I do know for a fact is that where they drove up, so after they, they drove along, so maybe he dropped down farther up river, up there, drove all the way down, and then where they went up was right near that gray house. Now it's kind of overgrown, but I'm pretty sure that you can just see it in the very last part of the scene. I think they would have drove up somewhere along there and then got back onto that road. Well, back then it probably wasn't a paved road, it was just a gravel back road. And obviously that house wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure that's where they drove the Trans Am up and out of the river. Now, of course, that Smokey followed Bandit down into the Chattahoochee as well and floored it and flooded out the engine. <laughs> Died probably somewhere in there. So then they had to get a tow truck in to actually pull it out of the uh, out of the river and then along comes Buford T. Justice in one of my favorite scenes ever. It was actually shot in this same exact spot. So it would have been somewhere along here would have been the tow truck. Now a little tri uh, movie trivia for you that red tow truck was actually a local. I believe his name was uh, Berlin Wiki and he was actually the tow truck driver. He didn't get any lines in the movie but he was kind of smiling as, uh, as Buford was just ranting away about, Do you see a black Trans Am go by? He caused all of this. The bandit. Ain't he something? The bandit ain't nothing. He's a metal dude. And so this would have been the spot where Buford had his car door open. And then, again, the road would have bent around. It, it's completely different than how it was back then. The road would have made the bend around there and, and it was a lot more clear. But the yellow, what was it, an international? I can't remember, I gotta look at the film. The, uh, the driver there came zipping around and came right at Buford's car. And came along and sheared the door off. Oh shit! I saw that, you bitch. You did that on purpose! You're going to wait in your grave! I got the evidence! Put the evidence in the car! But, but you got the evidence in the car! So then, he comes walking up, and he would have been standing right about here when he starts giving the lecture to his son about, there's no way that you can come from my loins. 
And so if you look, you can actually see the rock in the background. I don't think it was that wall there. I think it was something a little closer to here. Put the evidence in the back. There's no way, no way that you could come from my loins. Oh, check it out. We got a load of logs coming up. Hope he doesn't blow my door off. <laughs> and then if you also look really close, you'll see that little driveway. And then all the people, all the extras that were watching were all parked along there. I guess the traffic was stopped because they were pulling the cop car out of the ditch. But yeah, those would have been all the extras standing there watching just on the other side of that driveway. <laughs> that is so awesome to be standing here right where the movie was filmed 50 years later. Awesome. Well, they certainly named that correctly. I wonder if that's a tip of the hat to the movie. So a lot of people probably don't realize that the, the whole movie was actually filmed in Georgia. They, ne they never left Georgia to head to Texarkana. They used a little town called Jonesboro and kind of made it into Texarkana with a with a fake sign. But again, it was mainly filmed around Atlanta, a little bit in North Georgia, and, and a few other spots in kind of the the greater Atlanta area. And this uh, this was one of them. So let's see if you can recognize this particular location. We've got a long way to go and a short time. So a lot's changed, but this would have been the spot where Snowman was when he was westbound and down following following the Trans Am. Bert would have came zipping through. Westbound and down, 18 wheels rolling. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? We... And then, of course, the uh, the truck would have followed. I'm westbound just like a bandit run. Hard on the pedal, some hell will find him break. Let it all hang out, cause we gotta run the bait. The boys are thirsty in Atlanta, and there's fear in Texas. So obviously in the original scene there, there was a couple of pine trees that the cameraman was hiding behind and that's all gone now and they've done some landscaping with a, with a bunch of rock, but yeah, it's still pretty cool to find the, uh, the exact spot where it was filmed almost 50 years ago. All right, so this location here is the site of the truck rodeo thing. What's he get if he wins this truck rodeo thing? Yeah, five thousand dollars, Daddy. Chicken shit money. And it was also the site of the um, Southern Classic at the end. Daddy, you're about to have your evening ruined for you. Now there's not much left to to prove that this was actually the site. So this would have been where they had the uh, the truck drag racing that was going on. And the bandit would have been sitting over there or laying in his hammock over by those big trees. And if you kind of look through the mess of trees here, you can sort of see the stands. Well, what's left of them. So this is where all the fans would have been would have been standing. Check that out. Totally totally overgrown. But there were the original stands. <laughs> right on. Just a big parking lot now. And this is actually a movie studio. And if you look way off in the distance kind of ironic that it's a movie it turned into a movie studio if you look way off in the distance there you'll see those two pillars and those were quite evident when uh big and little enos burdett were standing behind the uh standing behind the bandit like a legend and an out of work bum look a lot of light daddy you can kind of see those off in the distance there um, uh, trouble i know we're in trouble <laughs> and this would have been the spot or the road, now it's just a, like I say, this is the uh, movie theater, but this would have been the road that uh, uh, I guess Bert, Sally, and Jerry Reed 
drove off in in the Cadillac at the end of the movie there. Huh, pretty neat. I'm digging it. It's pretty special to be in the same place as my favorite movie of all time was filmed 50 years ago. <laughs> A little opening here to get up to the old original stands. Oh, look how cool this is. Man, time sure took its toll. <laughs> so they would have been sitting here drinking. Oh, what kind of beer we got there? Red Stripe in a stubby bottle. Huh. Right on. It's kind of sad in a way how things just get deteriorated over time if they're not taken care of. Man, to have been in the stands, there was actually, uh, I have a copy of um, someone sent me an invite. It says, we're filming a movie with Burt Reynolds. Head on down to the fairgrounds and be in the movie, be an extra in the movie. Poor old Twin Sticks wasn't even born when this movie was filmed. Well, I probably was just born in the summer of 76 when this movie was filmed. So I guess I couldn't have been an extra, but my parents could have brought me down here. You egotistical son of a bitch. All right, so I figure I found another key spot where the movie was filmed. See if you can figure out this one. It's amazing that 50 years later, the posts are still out there. So that would have been where they jumped the Trans Am and then completely destroyed it where it landed, which is now a U-Haul storage facility. But that's fascinating that the posts are still there. Is there any remnants of the road? Yeah, it must just all be totally grown over. But that is so cool. That would have been where, obviously, Buford came along and slammed into that car and knocked it down into the water as well. So crazy. Because this, from watching the movie, this looks like this was all forest back then, and now it's a four-lane freeway. It's wild. Just gonna try and get back here to the, uh, the spot where the bridge was. See if there's any remnants of a road at all. Sure overgrown in here. Oh, look at that. This would have been where the bridge was. Oh, that's awesome. So, this must have been where Buford came along and knocked that car off and knocked it down. And maybe the, the river was higher back then. That is so cool. <laughs> you wrecked this car, it's gonna come out of your pay. <laughs> See, I didn't wreck it, Sheriff. <laughs> right on. Yeah, it's just so overgrown. And these, uh, I don't know what kind of trees these are. We don't have them in Canada, but. They're sharp as hell. Yeah, so this must have been the original road. You can kind of make it out. Ugh. See, oh, overgrown with these vines. Can't even get through here. There we go. Yeah, so that must have been the road there. <laughs> And then that's where they, that's where they launched the Trans Am. Now, that was one of the three. So the Pontiac gave, gave Hal uh, four 76 Trans Ams with 77 noses on the front. And when they jumped this one and landed it way over towards that U-Haul thing on the other side of the river, it, uh, it just destroyed it. <laughs> So that was, uh, that was one down. So they only had two left to play with. They had a fourth one, but it was used for promotional items uh, or promoting, promoting the movie after it was released in 77. So they actually 
Finished up the movie with three cars, just barely according to Hell Needham. That is really awesome. I'm so happy I found this. <laughs> Where's Sheriff Branford? I am Sheriff Branford. <laughs> so Jackie Gleason would have been standing right here when he was asking where is Sheriff Branford and then he would have walked about to where that beer can is and would have right up he would have walked to about here and then uh, gave that line what the hell is the world coming to <laughs> oh that is so awesome very cool I'm glad some of this stuff is still here. I mean, barely. Look at this. Get tangled right up in these stupid vine trees. Oh, man. Brutal. Brutal to walk through. It's so neat to actually come and see this in person where it was filmed. Like I say, 50 years ago, well, almost 50 years ago. And wild that the posts are still here and they haven't pulled them out yet. Right on. <laughs>